I'm Casey Lackey for Innovative Sugarworks, and today we are making my American version of modeling chocolate. I differentiate because this is made with candy melts and corn syrup, and they're not widely available everywhere in the world. Sometimes it can be hard to find candy melts or corn syrup. So I'm going to do another video for my glucose and chocolate recipe, but this one is just using candy melts and corn syrup. I'm using Wilton candy melts for this video just because they're the most widely available. And what my recipe here is, is it's 454 grams of chocolate to every 115 grams of corn syrup. I'm doing a quad batch, so I've got four pounds of white chocolate here and uh, 460 grams of corn syrup. I don't like doing more than four to five pounds at a time because it just gets really hard when you get in for the stirring. So, as you can see, I've got my chocolate melted. I get it to about this point where there's still a couple of lumps and chunks in it. And then I'll pull it from the heat and kind of just set it to the side so it doesn't get too hot and burn. This way, it'll finish melting the rest of the way while I go and heat up my corn syrup. So I've got my corn syrup in a microwave safe dish bowl thing. And I'm going to go and put it in the microwave for about a minute and a half so it's really warm and really liquidy. So I'll be right back. So now I've got my corn syrup heated up. You can see it's nice and liquidy. I'm gonna go ahead and put my chocolate back on the heat. As you can see, it's gotten nice and smooth and creamy. So it's not overheated. You don't have to temper this, but it, you don't want it to get too hot. And so then from here, I'm gonna just dump this guy in. So now I've added all my corn syrup in, and I'm gonna start stirring. And where my method for making this is different than most people's is I stir the ever-loving crap out of it. Most people would say to stop at about this point. But what I've found is this causes fat separation and makes things lumpy and bumpy and you get um, hard bits and your chocolate is done. So I actually just keep going and keep stirring. So you can see now it's starting to smooth back out. You'll notice all these kind of bubbles and stuff will go away. That's how you know when it's done, is all that liquid that may have separated out will recombine. And you end up with this really lovely, smooth, shiny chocolate. You can see most of those little bubbles have disappeared. It's gotten nice and smooth and shiny. And that's how you know you've got good modeling chocolate. All the liquid's been reabsorbed by the chocolate, by the stirring. There you go, modeling chocolate. And so from here, I've got my lined sheet pan. And just scrape it out of your sheet pan. Get all the good stuff out. And then I just like to spread it out really thin. It mostly is for later when you're going to re-knead it. It's a little bit easier to break off the chunks when it's thinned out. But as you can see, there's no fat pooling on the surface. A lot of people when they're making modeling chocolate are like, oh, I've got to like, I want to take paper towels and absorb all the separated fat. That won't happen when you make it this way. You have this nice, lovely, smooth stuff. And then I like to let this sit overnight. Got a pan that I did yesterday. So you can see, nice glossy surface. And then just take little pieces, knead it smooth. I like my modeling chocolate a little bit drier and stiffer. Um, it's a personal preference. You can always add small amounts of corn syrup if you wanted to try it out. I would say if you're wanting a softer one, 
Start 15 grams at a time, make small batches until you see the one that you like best. But I like mine to where it's got a little bit of a crack to it just because it works better for warm hands if it's a little bit dry. But the test of good modeling chocolate should be able to hold its shape just like that. So there you go, how to make modeling chocolate with candy melts and corn syrup.